It was the year 1985. The year, yes, the year. That year, doesn't that just ring a bell? I mean, does it legitimately ring a bell? Came along an operating system that would later become so primitive and choppy looking, but then would later become one of the most popular operating systems of all time. Microsoft Windows for MS-DOS. Well, it's not really for MS-DOS, it's actually an MS-DOS computer in general. But look at this. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Microsoft Windows. This is the original from 1985. And this one, <laughs> you'll be so surprised on how very primitive it looked. And how, you know, back in the old days it was actually pretty good. I don't know how to control mouse here. I'm just, you know, tapping some random buttons here. But this one is, believe it or not, the original Microsoft Windows. And, uh, you'll be surprised on how... You'll be surprised on how primitive it looks. As a matter of fact, you really hold on a second. You really shouldn't be hey, surprised because, heck? after all, it is very old. So this is something you're gonna have to expect. I'm trying to get the mouse on here. This is something you will have to expect. Let me see if the tab works. Okay, everything works just fine. I'm trying to get everything. Apparently, the delete button does not work. Hell, not even the arrows. But there's really nothing. Anything special for this version it just basically just like shows a bunch of files and programs and stuff that just comes up here I'm gonna showcase it well I say that it's only legitimately filled with just a bunch of stuff I mean it's literally filled with a bunch of stuff and I legitimately <coughs> you you probably you probably don't see my mouse but I'm pretty sure you do but look you got the clipboard the card file all this stuff ends up on Microsoft Windows 3. Normally, I would showcase this off, but there's really nothing special about this uh, about this version of Microsoft Windows. Just basically, just a bunch of programs and stuff that you can open and stuff. I wish I could showcase it all, but you see, there's really nothing really too special for a system like this. And the problem is, I can't get the mouse to move. Whether it be my PC or my virtual box that isn't working properly, or the ROM disk, or the or the uh, VHD that I'm using to run Windows One, the point is I I, I don't know. I have to see uh, for my I have to see for myself. But for now, all I can say is this is the original Microsoft Windows. You'll be this is what it all looks like this is it this is Microsoft Windows the original oh, yeah, dude, look. and yes you'll be surprised dude. well you really shouldn't because it's hold on a second I a... you'll be surprised wow well but all I can say is once again this is the original Nothing special. <laughs> Next video, we're going to talk about Windows 2. Yes, we're actually going in order with Microsoft Windows, giving tribute to the to the operating system that truly started PC. Legitimately gave birth to PC. Then came the second. Uh, Alright, there's actually another version of this one, which is called Point Two, and Windows 2.1 is actually the third. You'll be surprised. It's actually chronologically confusing. But you see, when I say, like, when I say, but I'm going it based on my order, okay? Okay? I'm going in my order, not Microsoft's order, my order. 
you guys might say no windows 3.1 is actually the four the fifth one or fourth whatever which one i told you i'm just doing it based on my just basically on how i do this but anyways this one is windows 2 this one is a direct sequel i would call it a sequel to the original and this one is much like the original just with a different layout um I'm not entirely sure what year it was. Maybe it was 1989 when this one came out. I'm not sure. I, I, who cares? Anyways, here we go. So that's how you basically run your programs. And, you know, if you're possibly wondering what these arrows are for, they're for just like to descend or ascend. From something I'm not entirely sure how to describe it. There's the notepad. It's nice how they actually had that back in the day. Um, then you get the card file. I think I guess you could store card information there. I don't know why they removed that. I guess it was because it was so primitive that they had to get rid of it. Who knows? And who cares? Also, it has reverse C. Yes, when you see that little plus right there, that means you can uh, pretty much use it. You can make your move. You get to make your move. You get to make your move. Oh, look, see, you may only move to a space where the cursor is across. Dang it, I keep tapping on the thing. It doesn't matter anyway, I'm just... It doesn't matter anyway because I'm just trying to showcase what this uh, primitive thing looks like. <laughs> Here's a clock. <laughs> Let's take a look at the clock. There's no time on there, but you should be able to tell based on that. Everybody knows what a traditional clock looks like. You don't need to. Oh, yeah, there's hotkeys too. I forgot to mention that. There is legitimate hotkeys in. In. <laughs> this operating system this awesome operating system oh and on top of that it's also got a little paint program and I'm gonna showcase this baby off just real quick this one's the paint program and it actually looks pretty good look at this one this one looks like Pac-Man as a matter of fact I, I, I think it is um, you it, it does look like Pac-Man but it, but basically you just draw like you know a bunch of stuff like if you were to draw a head like this you would definitely get that other times you would pretty much like get some weird stuff it's basically drawing itself into a polygon except that this one isn't a polygon because it's crossed so oh my god are you serious you still got the same problem I do apologize about this. The fucking mouse keeps. Tra I apologize about my cursing, but it just keeps traveling outside the outside the box. But that's pretty much it to this version. Nothing else. Once again, nothing special. Just you know, very primitive. So then, peace out. Beyond the infinite. Welcome to the third Microsoft Windows version, actually the fourth, by the way. This is actually the fourth, but I call it third, no, this is actually the fifth, but I call it third. Once again, I'm only going in my order, okay? Just my order. This one is called Windows 3. This one was the first, it was still in 16-bit, but without using the MS-DOS prompt instead. Still 16-bit, but it was on a separate operating system by the, by this time. This one is Windows point one, I mean 3.1. I mean, sorry. Um, here's Microsoft Office. These are the uh, Microsoft offices that uh, at least worked with Windows 3. These were one of the originals. I mean, like, like let's see if if it'll autocorrect how.
No, it doesn't. By the way, I was just singing the NWO WrestleMania X8 theme. Okay, we're getting off topic. Anyway, these are the uh, Microsoft. These are the Microsoft offices. They're primarily known as one point. No, Microsoft Office 3.0, and this is my Microsoft Excel. Everybody knows how that works. Okay, so we're pretty much done with that. Now we're going to look at the accessories. And uh, this one has write, paintbrush, terminal, notepad, recorder, object packager, clock, calculator, calendar, card file, character map, sound rec I mean, w media player, and sound recorder. Now, I don't know if this thing is even working right, so we don't have to worry about that. <coughs> Sorry, I, I just I just sneezed that time, so I apologize. Anyways, you guys prob I you guys probably heard the tada um in the opening of the video. Maybe you haven't, but yeah, I have the sound drivers on here. Finally, um, it's in red. This is the character map. It shows uh, you know a bunch of characters and stuff, and you can type them in here. see isn't that cool that's basically what the character map is you type it in there and then you could copy and paste it the object packager is basically where you could put all your content and <coughs> sorry and obviously we already know what a clock is tells time and this one right here is the calculator uh... what we got here is the calendar and we already know how a calendar, calendar works so don't even go ahead and ask me how it works and this is the card file. I guess you could store your card information here. You see, there's one fatal problem I'm encountering. Never mind. Um, this is the recorder. I guess it's for a camera or whatever. I highly doubt it's for a camera. This is the notepad, and everybody knows about the notepad. Yeah, I'm actually using D. And speaking of that, its key is ripped off. Even the, um... Even the uh, black button is gone. I just tap on that hot little pad there. This is the terminal. Oh my god, I hate it when that does that. I hate it when it does that. But basically, you just hook up your, your telephone to it. Here's the paint brushing. Uh, this is a this is a paint program. It, you thought Mario Paint was primitive? Well, look again. Look at this. Okay, we can X out. This one right here, I don't know what this one is. I guess you could just write a bunch of pages. Yeah, it's basically another version of Notepad, even though this one is useless. We're going to exit out. And then we're gonna close this. This is the minima. This is the menu button that you press close right here, or use the hotkey. These arrows right here descends and ascend from parts of different programs. These are the Windows 3.1 built-in games. Hold on a second. Okay. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, this is the startup one. I do apologize about the noise in the background. I do apologize. Here are some of the basic programs. I don't think it comes with the system, but uh, this is, but that is pretty good. Here's some more games for uh, for Windows 3. You got, you know, basically a bunch of primitive games. I'm gonna have to say. Hold on a second. Okay. Now, here's the main. Right, and then you get the file manager and all that other stuff. I don't think there's no need to show me because a lot of you actually know how these things work. Who are into like computers and old school technology. Okay, so that's pretty much concludes this video for um Windows 3.1. It was actually pretty innovative for its time, and uh, once again another another good um system, another good one. As a matter of fact, it made it into my top five best and worst Microsoft Windows versions. This one's amazing to use if you're into primitive technology like me. So if you are into actually using primitive technology, this one's for you. Till then, peace out. Beyond the infinite. In the next video, we're gonna talk about Windows 95.
if I can stop. Welcome to the fourth video of the history of Microsoft Windows. This one is Windows 95. But yeah, you remember listening to that old familiar Windows 95 sound? Everybody, everybody remembers this one. This is the Windows version that, um, it was released in, uh, August of 1995, and, uh, D remember back back in the back in the old days when we we had the DOS versions of Microsoft Windows one Windows one through three. You got to keep in mind they really weren't popular. But when Windows ninety five came out, using the Windows Explorer that we know today. As you can see, on top of that, it it also it was released to a high major success. But back in the old days, Apple was popular. But when Windows ninety five came out, that was when Microsoft. Without my without Windows ninety five, there wouldn't be a Microsoft Windows. Okay, this is the ver this is the version that made Microsoft Windows very popular, and as one of the widely as as one of the most widely used, uh, um, yeah, as one of the most widely used Windows versions of all time, and you can see why. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, here's the my here's the my computer. Okay, that would be the local disk drive. This is where the floppy disk would go. That right there is your disk drive. There's the control panel, printers, and dial-up networking. Yeah, back in the old days, when we had to hook up our uh, we had to hook up our computers to a dial-up modem, which was uh, not it was it wasn't it wasn't crappy, but uh. It was still pretty innovative for its time. As a matter of fact, quite frankly, this is the Windows version that's for you if you're really into primitive technology and see how Microsoft Windows really started. Even though Windows 1 was actually the first, Windows 95 was the one that really started it all. See the documents, you got the programs, here's the accessories. Oh, look, you got the games. This is the, um,. This is the this is Windows 95 Microsoft Plus. So this time it has games on here. There's the facts, internet tools. You can go to Internet Explorer, pretty much. Use the multimedia, the system tools, calculator, character map, dial-up networking. I pretty much just talked about all this stuff in my previous videos. So please refer to my last videos because I'm not explaining these again. You guys are probably thinking, dude, this is a tour. You're supposed to show everything. You're absolutely right, but it's more the fact that I've talked about it thousands of times. So it's like, why would I do that if I already talked about it so many times? But I'll show you what the pay program looks like. It has that, it has that familiar Windows XP kind of looking thing. Basically, you can still pretty much paint even with the pencil tool. Oh, yeah, you want to know what a dearth looks like? That's a dearth. <laughs> there. You also have the recycle bin, and everybody knows how this one works. I think you have to go through here to, de to permanently delete these files. The one with the X. Okay, let's X out. Uh,. You got the inbox, which is for email, the network, neighborhood. I guess you could get it. Oh, wait, I don't feel like setting up. Alright. Let's take a look at the games. I will show them off, at least. It just has a few ones. It even has the Space Cadet table, that uh, pinball game. I had no idea it was on Windows 95. Apparently, it was. Yeah, this is the uh, Microsoft Plus version of Windows 95. I want you guys to be aware of that. 
But let's take a look at it. I guess it, 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 it probably wouldn't hurt to look at it. Ladies and gentlemen. And the sound quality is pretty good. I mean, it's kind of like a little bit old, but for an operating system that's this old and being used in the year 2014, that's something you have to expect. Alright, so let's see if the game works. Alright, it's, it's kind of loud. They move choppy. They move choppy, but it moves okay. It actually plays well. Believe it or not, it actually, it actually plays okay. Man, I had no idea what that number was 95. That, that's actually pretty cool. That I found out about this until now. This is my first time using this version of Windows 95, and I had no idea about this. Alright, that was pretty cool. You guys probably can't hear me. I apologize. I know. The game is way too loud. Yeah, I got a black hole. A black hole? Huh. Okay. Then there's the MSN, which is Microsoft Network. Yeah, they call it the Microsoft Network, just like the Shizzo Network, as I'm you know, doing this. Then there's the MS DOS prompt. You can still use that. Right now, Windows 95 is in the 16 bit colors. I'm not sure if I can change it to. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention this one. You can actually change your uh, the way your icons look. Yeah, you can change the way your icons look and your visual settings and stuff. That's another thing I forgot to mention about about Microsoft Plus of Windows 95. Video's going on until a little too long, but I actually, I'm sorry, but I actually had a lot to say about this one. Here's the color palette, and then you got you have my, Micro Chrome. We don't want that, we want it in 16-bit color, okay? But that pretty much concludes this walkthrough of Windows 95. It, once again, it was, it was it's one of the most, uh, it's one of the most memorable Microsoft Windows versions of all time. And definitely, quite possibly, one of the best. After all, this was the Windows version that really made Microsoft Windows very popular. So, as I say, if it wasn't for this version of Microsoft Windows, Microsoft Windows wouldn't even exist or be widely used as it is today. So, bottom line, Windows 95, on a scale from 1 to 10, I would give it. Uh. I would give it a nine out of ten. You guys might be you guys might be thinking, dude, this thing is old. Well, guess what? Didn't I say I was into primitive technology? <laughs> but yeah, that that's Windows 95 for you. In the next video, in the next video, if I can do it, we'll talk about Windows NT4. If not, we'll just go to Windows 98. So stay tuned for the next video. This really would help if uh, this hotkey really worked. Yeah, whatever. Let's check out something else. Wow, pretty cool pattern. It's like an optical illusion. That's awesome! Welcome, everybody. I do apologize. You're probably wondering, dude, why didn't you review Windows NT4? Because after all, that that Microsoft Windows version came before this one. The only problem is, is that on VirtualBox I can't log in because for some reason it keeps saying that my password isn't correct, even though it says administrator on there. So I only assume that. But we're getting off topic. It just won't let me log on. I don't know why I would. We're just getting off topic. I just want to cut to the chase. 
Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I give you another one of the most popular uh, Windows versions of all time. This one is Windows 98. God. I just love listening to the, those old uh, startups for Microsoft Windows. And yes, this one is another one of the best. You have Microsoft Outlook, which is an email uh, software. You can connect to the internet. You can use online services, the My Documents, my Computer, Internet Explorer, Network Neighborhood, Recycle Bin, and NSN. Everybody knows about NSN and all that other stuff. That was that was the service that we used back then, just to connect to the internet. To the, to, to, to the. You see, I would actually go to Internet Explorer, but it wants me to sign into MSN, and I don't have one. And even if I did, it probably wouldn't work on here, since you know this is old. Excuse me, guys. Okay. Now here's the favorites. That's a new one. Oh, and it has a Windows Update too. Don't use it because Windows 98 is not in support no more. It also has a search kind of thing. Help the Run program. Uh, settings. Yeah, you got the active desktop. You can just right click on the uh, background. It will do that. Then there's the My Documents. And then you, of course, you get the programs, like online services. This one doesn't have any games, and th because this one is the original version, this is the original version of Windows 98. In case you guys aren't aware, which is why it doesn't have any games, because this one is the original version. It's also got imaging, which I'm pretty sure is for like, oh, it was made by Kodak, only exclusive to Windows. I guess you could like and put an image on here so that way you can like so that way you could use it to edit it or something like that. I'm not the th the point is I'm not entirely sure. But whatever the case is actually pretty well made. But anyways. Alright, so we're gonna go back into the programs and of course you still have the accessories like the communication, which was dial up, networking, uh you got the entertainment. Like there's an interactive CD sampler. Uh, you also got the system tools, which is for like fixing your computer if anything is wrong with it. Ad you also have an address book, calculator, of course the imaging, which we just did. Uh, notepad, paint, and WordPad. Okay. You also have the MS DOS prompt. I think this was the last one to use the MS DOS prompt. And. Uh, here we go. You can just go to Active Desktop and go on Customize My Desktop right there. Pretty much. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. Alright. You also have this, uh. You also get to use, like, screen savers. You can see it's not moving its best way because, like, it's in 3D, so it means it's got a lot of space to fill. Oh, look! They actually use 3D pipes. That's pretty cool. In case you guys aren't aware, uh, it's on Windows XP, too, which is an operating system that we're going to review for another day. But that's pretty cool. Cool. I'm just going to apply for it anyway. Alright, you also have the effects, which we saw in the last video, which was Windows 95. It was on Microsoft Plus. Okay, so here's the settings, and this is pretty much where you could change the colors and stuff like that. Oh my god, two colors? Dang, that's very primitive. We're just going to keep it default. Alright. So that pretty much concludes Windows 98. It was again, it's, it's another, it's another version of Windows that was very innovative for its time, much like Windows 95, except with, except with more features. That's what's so great about it. That's what's so great about it, though. <sighs>
All right. In the next video, <laughs> we're going to talk about Windows 2000. Oh yes, we're moving into the millennium. Uh yeah, <laughs> the millennium. We'll uh quite possibly get Oh, whatever. Yes, we're going to move into the millennium including this one. So, yeah, hopefully. Until then, peace out this is beyond the infinite. Stay tuned for the next video. baby built on the NT technology this one will happen to be the sixth the sixth Microsoft window version of the entire family and oh yes this one was this one was targeted wait we'll get to that in a second but this one is known as Microsoft Windows 2000 professional This one is actually this one Windows 2000 is the first Microsoft Windows version of the of the new millennium and uh it was built on the NT technology and it was marketed as the most secure Windows version of all time. I actually remember this personally a lot of hospitals and uh, stuff do it. I, I mean it's so obvious because Windows 2000 was targeted towards businesses. That's why it was only released as professional. There's no Windows 2000 home edition or any of that stuff. That didn't come until ME, which is Millennium, by the way. But even though this one was actually the first one of the Millennium series, but Windows ME was targeted towards everything. But despite that it's a professional, it also has some games. It's got system tools, once again, entertainment communications and accessibility including the narrator these are the new features use the accessibility wizard magnifier narrator the narrator that we all know on screen keyboard and utility manager sorry guys I I, I told I guys I'm sneezed I, I, I'm not feeling good so please bear with me so you guys have to bear with me on this one I'm not feeling good but this one is the accessibility wizard you can pretty much like set up you you can pretty much like customize your computer from there this is the magnifier it magnifies your vision it's lagging because I don't have Intel HD graphics and, I, and if I did this one would definitely move faster even if I was screen recording but I don't have it so sorry go ahead to bear with me and then here's the narrator as we all know Foreground window. Help. Push button to press new space bar. Narrator. Dialogue. Narrator can read aloud menu commands, dialogue box options, and more. Announce events on screen. Checkbox. Checked. Read type characters. Checkbox. Checked. Move mouse pointer to set foreground window. Voice. List. Voice setting. Pitch spin control. Spin box. Pitch spin control. Spin box. Pitch spin control. Spin. Pitch spin control. Pitch spin control. Foreground window. Set foreground yeah, see, window. Pitch you spin control. Vo volume spin. Volume spin control. Volume spin. Speed spin control. Okay. Foreground window. Foreground. Uh, speed spin. Okay. Foreground window. Voice. Push button. Uh, foreground window. Yep, that's the narrator that we all know of so today. I was just letting you guys listening to him for a little while, but I guess you guys are probably like, oh yeah, we pretty much get it. But I was just showing you what he was. Anyway, you also have the uh, on-screen keyboard, and this one really isn't that. It really isn't that special. It's just an on-screen keyboard that you can use. It's, it's kind of useless. It just really depends if you don't have a keyboard drivers driver or some sh stuff like that <laughs> they also have the utility manager which shares the config files with the okay push button to press new space bar Microsoft 
Yeah. It just shows you any accessibility program that runs. That's pretty much everything. That's good. That's pretty much everything I gotta say about this Windows version. This this one really is is anything special. Nothing else other than the same old stuff that we see before. Also, they replaced the MS DOS prompt with the command prompt. And they also have a synchronized which updates the network copy of materials that were edited and uh, off offline such as documents, ca calendars, and email messages. A lot of you are seeing me read off this thing. Of course you also have the word pad which is also a new kind of... Which is also pretty new. The recycle bin, you also have this. I forgot to show off this stuff. If I do sneeze, guys, please bear with me. I told you, I'm not, guys, I'm not feeling well. I think I might have a cold, but I'm not going to let it stop me. Anyways, you also have the documents and the pictures as well. You can see that the picture is all grainy because it's not, it's, just, it's still in 16-bit. If you want, if you do wish to make it look like more sophisticated, you're going to have to like, uh, um, um, you're gonna have to like change it to look to 32 bit, but it still has a pretty good sound to it too. All right, that's pretty much all there is to this one. Nothing else new. Just uh, just special. Nothing special. It still has the same games from Microsoft 90 from Microsoft Windows 95, so don't be concerned about that one. But that yeah, that's pretty much it. Windows 2000 is definitely not one of the worst, though. Also, I forgot to go into the Internet Explorer thing. Hold on, let's try it again. There we go. All right. Yep. I'm actually on the Internet on Windows 2000. And look, I'm actually on YouTube. See, it's not showing the search. But yep, this is it. Anyway, that's pretty much it. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about, oh boy, Windows Millennium. Just stay tuned for it. And yes, we are here to join, once again, the Microsoft version of the Millennium. And that makes sense, because this one is Windows Millennium Edition. Yes, and it uses the same startup sound as, uh... Windows 2000. Now, um, uh, this one is actually considered one of the worst technology products in history. Uh, it doesn't even look necessarily as bad as it looks. It just looks more like a poor man's version of Windows 2000. But yep, here it is. This one also has Microsoft games. No, wait. This one was actually part of the hard drive. It has Age of Empires. Uh, it's also got built-in games. The first one to feature the internet versions of these games. It also has Spider Solitaire and all that other stuff. And then there's Microsoft Reference, like Microsoft Bookshelf 95. Uh, it also has Windows Movie Maker, too. Which is actually pretty cool. 
pretty damn cool. I don't know how to use it, but that's anyway. It also has Microsoft Office. You have these things back here. I mean, on the right here. <laughs> that features this kind of other stuff. Also, these are just these are just separate programs. Don't be worried about them. It has Magic ISO, and everybody knows how this works. So. And it works on uh, the Millennium. Here's my documents. Let's go into my video. Here we go. Here's a Windows Movie Maker sample file. Sample file. Here's the old Windows Movie Media Player. Alright, sadly I can't see. But I don't know what's wrong with it. But yeah, this one is generally considered to be one of the worst ever made. Uh I really don't blame them because it, it it's just me uh mediocre a little bit. This one is considered to be a huge commercial failure. You can see why. Slow running very it was very slow but you also have Microsoft Office like the PowerPoint program which is actually for Windows 95 so uh, yeah uh, you also have Microsoft Word and everybody knows how this one works and this once again this was for Windows 95 I actually have a disk inside my desk it's on one of my desks and basically what it has is it has an installation disk for Windows 95 or 98 I'm not sure which but I'm pretty sure it's 95 uh, but yeah this is now this one I have a conflicting opinion for but if I was to choose between Windows me or 2000 you're probably just better off using Windows 2000 in the next video, we're going to discuss, we're going to talk about one of the best Windows versions of all time. Well, definitely one of the most well-knowns, and, and its error, I just gave you a hint thing, its error sound has been parodied thousands of times and turned into remixes on YouTube. Windows XP, one of the most popular. So in the next video, we're going to talk about that. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, I do apologize about everything in the background. Now, here we are with one of the most well-known Microsoft Windows versions of all time. One of the most, and definitely one of the best and most memorable. It will be missed. It will be dearly missed. But, this one, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Windows XP. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so sorry guys. So, I can't believe this. Why would Microsoft do this? Sorry guys. But yes, it is very sad that Windows XP ended support earlier this year. But it still has extended support. It's just that it's just that it doesn't have mainstream support for it. But this is the Microsoft Windows version that everybody knows. This is um the home edition, in case you guys are not aware. Um This one I really enjoy. Um I actual Windows XP was the was the Microsoft Windows version that I grew up on in, during my childhood. 
Um, except I'm still in the bottom in my teenage years now, of course. About to become an adolescent next year. Okay. This one has, of course, the accessories, except with brand new features like my Windows Explorer. Basically, it just opens up this, pretty much. Uh, have this, which is nothing. But yeah, this is pretty much what the documents will look like. I forgot. Hold on a second. I gotta enable the address book. Not the address, the URL port. Give me a minute. Hold on. Huh. Here we go. Here we go. And now... I apologize. Uh, here's the local disk. The CD drive. No floppy drive. But yeah, this is pretty much everything that you will see on the computer. Uh, here's the local disk. Many of you guys know. You guys might be wondering. You only have 10 gigs on here? Of course, because I'm using VirtualBox. Many of you actually know that. But yeah, this is what the local disk drive would be. Just show the contents. Here it is. There's the Windows stuff. Now that's the files you don't want to bother. Alright, let's get out of here. Uh, here's the pay program. Once again, it looks it's basically the same. Same old thing. Same old, same old. Here's here's Windows Movie Maker. It'll still run, okay? And I actually made a Microsoft movie out of my an out of animated stuff that I draw, and I'm gonna show you them real quick. Yeah, his name is Chetty, and uh, pretty much uh, I drew just about almost every side of him. See? Yeah, I drew every side of, of Chetty. This is my first drawing of him. I know he looks terrible, but I improved over him. And plus, not to mention he was bald. <laughs> I guess you guys wouldn't like him if he was bald. This is him with mouth poses. Yeah, pretty much. Alright. Now that... I, oh yeah, I forgot to show you the sample pictures. These are four samples. Right there. Um, I forgot to show you the games, but this one's really is nothing special. Just the same old stuff that we've seen before. From the last video, at least. <laughs> Once again, it features the narrator... Oh, oh yeah, and it also has new communications. Rather than dial-up modem, you can still let, do wireless. As a matter of fact, this version of Windows XP that I'm using was released in May of 2013. Yeah, this is a 2013 edition of Windows XP. Home Edition Service Pack 3, to be exact. So it actually has the new one. Uh, the new, uh, when... <sighs> Internet Explorer. Sorry, I almost lost track. Anyways, it also has the command prompts. It also has the system tools. Once again, same old stuff. But it also features Activate Windows because I don't have it activated yet. And I only have 50 days to do it. So got the accessibilities. Here's the narrator. Foreground window. Foreground window. Narrator. Help foreground window. Program manager. Best foreground window. Voice set foreground window. A foreground window. Yeah, he'll always say that every single time. Um, there's really nothing much else to say about this edition. It just, as a matter of fact, the only way to sum this video up is just to say this. It uses uh, pretty much many of the new school hardware, like the uh, new internet browsers and applications that are out. As long as your Windows XP thing is good, but the version of Camtasia Studio that I'm using to record this video right now does not support this one. It only supports it from Windows Vista to up since uh, the mainstream support for Windows XP ended. So now, you know, so now they still continue support for Vista. And speaking of Vista, that's what we're gonna get to. 
that's the one we're gonna get to in the next video. <laughs> we're gonna get to that one in the next video. Um, you can also change uh, the way your toolbar looks as well. Your startup menu, you can use the classic one. Or you can just use the right, the new one. It doesn't really matter. And let me show you what else you can do. Yeah, you can change the appearance. Windows XP style. Or Windows Classic. Doesn't really matter. You can also change the color. Which is another pretty good thing. And you can also change your fonts. That's only for people who really can't read. You can change your screen resol resolution. And your quality. There's a lot of stuff with Windows XP that I would love to talk about, but there's nothing else other than the same old stuff. Just updated by today's standards. I love Windows XP, as a matter of fact. Uh, Windows XP will be missed. Back in 2001, it was one of the most memorable of all time. So when Windows XP came out, it was the, sh it was the stuff. So in the next video, yes, we're going to talk about Windows Vista. Stay tuned for that, okay? Until then, peace out, deuces beyond the infinite. Yeah. If I could uh, try to get this thing to like, I don't know, my Camtasia's crap. Honestly, I don't know if I really should be giving this one a review, but because it's part of the Windows family, it has to be, it has to be mentioned. To be real honest though, I actually love Windows Vista, I'm not gonna lie. I actually love Windows Vista, especially considering the fact that Microsoft did improve it over the years, and like, you know... People have said, yeah, Windows Vista is not bad now. I mean, back then, as a matter of fact, Windows Vista was so bad that it was actually highly protested. It was actually protested against because, like, there were so many restrictions and problems and perform yeah, mostly performance problems with Windows Vista. But over the years, my but over the years, Microsoft pretty much improved. They improve all of those problems with Vista, and now, you know. That was positive. Now, yeah, I actually heard that Windows Vista improved. But yeah, it actually had performance issues, which was the biggest problem. But now, but now, all those problems with Vista is fixed. I know, I'm saying problems a lot, because that's basically what Vista had. It had a bunch of problems. <laughs> I guess you could say I'm a problem-holic. <laughs> Anyways... This version of Windows is actually quite possibly one of my favorite, as a matter of fact. I have nothing against this one. This one is actually pretty dang. It's pretty darn good. This one is Windows Vista Ultimate. It has Media Center, even though Windows XP actually had it, too. And it also has the new Windows Movie Maker, too. Windows Movie Maker 6, which is what I have installed on my Windows 7 PC, which is what I'm using to do this. Okay. It says right here that it could be started because my video card does not support the required level of the hardware acceleration or hardware acceleration is available. And I could I could take a look to that. I could I could look into that. See if I can fix that problem. But anyways. It also has the tablet PC, which is a new thing. It would I would actually use this, but I don't have the I don't have the uh, I don't have a tablet PC, but it also has sticky notes, which is uh, which is also available on Windows 7. Which once again I'm using I'm using Windows 7 to make this video, 
once again, I'm doing this on virtual box. I keep repeating myself, I know, but yeah, you can you can pretty much draw or whatever. I'm not sure if you could type, drag and drop. Well, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Is this one? This sticky note is kind of different. It also records. Maybe I'll try to fix that. Maybe I'll try to work this one out. But yeah, performance issues was the main problem that v Vista had. But once again, it, it improved over the years. They removed all those restrictions in later releases of Windows Vista. And now it's pretty much better now. It's also got pr new games, which I, which I really should be talking about because the games really aren't the focus here. But one of them is actually one of my favorite built-in games on Vista, and that's 8-Ball. Some of you possibly think that 8-Ball sucks, but to me it's actually pretty fun. That's only if you know how to play. Because actually, when I had Windows Vista, I actually played this one a lot. But you see how it's running slow? See how it's running slow? Uh, this is the whole purpose of it. You're supposed to draw a line. You're supposed to draw a line, and then the ball bounces on it. And, like, you're supposed to get it up in that hole. You're not supposed to let it go down that hole or any other hole. Look, 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 look. look see? It just went down that hole. And there we go. Yeah, this is the game I've had the most fun with. I guess you're using the ink. So do all that. So. But yeah. That's pretty much everything I have to say. That's pretty much everything I have to say about Windows Vista. There's really nothing special about Windows Vista. It's just a it's just more of like a uh 2005 looking version of Windows 7. Look, see? That was the problem. With Windows Vista. And look, I just tapped on the thing right there and it's taking a long, long time to load up. I mean, it's mostly because of the screen recorder, but you know, once again, the performance issues. Vista had that kind of stuff, but it's mostly it's mostly running slow because of my screen recorder. This one, I'm actually like not having so much problems with. It's just my screen recorder screwing me up pretty much. But I'm not gonna let it stop me. But once again, nothing really else special about this one. It actually looks pretty decent. It also has Windows DVD Maker, and a lot of people knows how to work that one. You basically put a bunch of videos and then make a menu layout of it, and then you just burn it to your disk. That's pretty much it. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm actually thinking, as a matter of fact, guys, <laughs> I'm letting you guys know right now, I'm actually going to make, hopefully I can make DVD copies, of uh, the Rectile 1 to 4 reviews on DVD. Uh, and they're just basically going to be discs with my handwriting on it, pretty much. And I'm possibly going to sell them on Amazon. Oh, yeah, look. Uh, in case you guys are wondering, there. Okay. Nothing else really special about Windows Vista. It's actually one of the worst. It's actually is actually regarded as the worst Microsoft Windows version. If you saw my top five worst, you'll notice that uh, you'll notice that um, this version of Windows Vista that this that uh, Windows Vista came in at number one. Not just the beta one, but this one too, the full version. The finished version, but this one, Windows Vista is okay. It's just that it could have been, it it, it could have been better. So uh, nothing else really much special about Windows Vista. It's all right as long as you know how to use it. Coming up next, this will be sadly the final video. Even though Windows 8 is out, 
I have no way of running Windows 8, so I apologize. I'm going to have to skip that one. Maybe, hopefully, when I do get a Windows 8 PC, I will, I will definitely make an update video to to my um, History in the Making series following regarding Microsoft Windows. But for now, peace out, deuces, beyond the infinite, guys. Uh, next video, I'm going to talk about my favorite Microsoft Windows version of all time. Windows 7. You can stop now, Camtasia. <laughs>
there's no games on here because of course it's, a, it's the professional this is a modified version of Windows 7 professional actually for those of you who don't know uh, these are the programs I have installed DOS box there's DOS box there's virtual box and these are all my Windows VHD that I have uh, the downloads and all that other stuff the, the downloads of recent places go here but I move them to to another to by move them to another spot but here I'm gonna put it back so that way nobody can get confused here let's move it to the bottom uh here we go let's put them back there there this is the documents and you can pretty much like change how you want your icons to look like extra large content tiles details lists small icons doesn't really matter uh this is where the music is of course there's a bunch of stuff there and here are the f pictures you guys are possibly look staring at this one. This is me when I made my that's me when I made my daily motion video on Coca Cola. Some of you actually know that. Here's my Shizzle Network logos. Yes, now you guys know where I have them from. My Shizzle Network logo is on Google. Just search up Shizzle Network or the Reptile One Two Four and look. I go on Google Images. You guys should see my logo and they're transparent. Here are the videos. By the way, this is my recent video that I uploaded as part of Halloween, but I know I'm too late with it, but you guys had to bear with me because I had a lot of work to do. Uh, here's the local disk drive. And this is where the program files will go. And this is where the Windows stuff is. This is pretty much where all the files to run Windows would be. And this is a, uh, this one is a 250 gig uh, computer yes I'm kind of running out of space here but that doesn't matter it has a blu-ray ROM and a DVD ROM but yeah that pretty much concludes wait wait a minute I'm leaving out a crucial part some crucial parts at least you got the newer versions of Microsoft of Microsoft Office but these are 2007 though Let's look at the accessories. You don't have, unfortunately, I don't think Narrator is on here. Yeah, Narrator is not on Windows 7, sadly. But you can still install Speak Out Data. Here's Ease of Access. Wait, Narrator is on here. I apologize, guys. This is, it's just that it's called Ease of Access. You have the Ease of Access Center, the Magnifier, the Narrator, and all that other stuff, and Windows Speech Recognition, which you can use to dictate text and control your computer by voice, which is actually what I'm planning to do. The sound recorder is on here. Also, it also features a new one called a snipping tool. It basically captures a portion or an image of it. Like, uh, here, let me show you for instance. I want to show you real quick. All right. Say I want to take a little image of this part right here. And see, it takes a little image right here. And then you can just pretty much draw stuff and do whatever else. The snipping tool is actually pretty cool. go back into the accessories you can also connect the computer to a projector which is actually pretty new and a network projector too it also has a new paint program not like uh, I forgot to I forgot to mention the paint program in, in uh, Windows Vista but it was running so slow that I had to like stop the video so you guys have to bear with me on that once again here we go wait 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 I kind of screwed up there. Here we go. I'm not concerned about drawing anything. I'm just doing this just for show. Okay. Right now he's in black and white. <laughs> Let's make his hair color red. He's naked. Don't be concerned about that. He's got black eyes. There. Yeah. 
And it also allows you to use the shapes from Microsoft Office. Like say if you wanted to put a heart on there, you could. You could also put fills in it too. Yeah, it pretty much supports the shapes. That's another pretty innovative feature. Yes, and every every program nowadays is supported with Windows 7. Sadly, it's going to discontinue support next year. At, at least I think. I think that's only for Windows Vista. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, it's going to be sad when this one doesn't have support anymore. But I'm pretty sure Microsoft is still going to continue support for this one anyway because a lot of people doesn't a lot of people don't don't like uh, Windows 8 that much for some reason, which is why, as a matter of fact, the main reason why I'm doing history in the making on Microsoft Windows is because Windows Windows 10 is coming out next year during the late during the late year of 2015. Yeah, Windows 10 is coming out and. Uh, it's gonna be th it's gonna be the 30 year no wait hold on a second yeah it's gonna be the 30 year anniversary yeah it's gonna be the 30 year anniversary since Microsoft Windows came into existence and that's basically why I'm doing this you guys are probably wondering why am I doing this why am I doing why am I doing a history on Microsoft Windows because Windows 10 is coming out and then we're going to celebrate the 30 year anniversary since Microsoft Windows all started. And when that and when that time does come, I will definitely make I will def I will definitely make an update video to um the history of the making season 1 for Microsoft Windows. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All I can say is that pretty much concludes the very first season of Microsoft of History in the Making in Microsoft Windows. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys enjoy this. And uh, by the way, this is also the tenth. In case you guys aren't aware, and just to just to prove to you that it's on ten, and I told you I'm doing this by order. Yeah, I'm doing this by order. In case you guys aren't aware, look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and now ten. I had to skip this one because you know this one doesn't work, unfortunately. So I, it, but you don't really need to be concerned about it. It's just an updated looking version of Windows 95. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and in the next video, I will do a top. T I will do a top ten Microsoft Windows version. Out of out of the ten, out of the ten Windows versions that I've reviewed, okay, I can at least give you guys my own recommendations. Now, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, until then, peace out, deuces, beyond the infinite. That's funny.